Dangerous. Ordinary citizens are out videotaping cops on the job. They're a volunteer-based grassroots organization that arms themselves with video cameras as a means to watch police officers in action. The group is called Cop Watch. They started in 1990 and they were trying to defend homeless people against police. And so they went out there with video cameras and they started documenting what was happening. And it quickly had traction. And actually, police were less inclined to do things that were illegal or bad when there was a video camera there. And a year later was Rodney King. So of course, that spread across the country, the idea that we could all watch the police. More cop watch groups started establishing themselves around the country. And the idea is simple, to pound the pavement in some of America's biggest cities to videotape cops as they go about their work. We're looking at a system. We add, but we're not anti-police, we're, we're pro-accountability. Some of us are working to take things to the next level. Every time there's a murder, every time there's another, a new police outrage, how many times have we found ourselves demanding an independent investigation? We have decided to stop doing that. We have decided that we will do our own investigations. We will do people's investigations. Yes. If you go to the Berkeley Cop Watch website and you click on it, you will see an intensely documented investigation of the in-custody death of Kayla Xavier Moore. On February 13th of this year, in her own home, a 41-year-old African-American transgendered woman who suffers from mental illness, she was in her home with her caregiver. Berkeley police officers went to her home in response to a call for what was essentially a, a mental health crisis. And mentally ill people are, are four times as likely as the general public to be killed in an encounter with the police. Police officers entered her home and they escalated the situation that ultimately killed her. Ultimately, she was face down on a food town. She's 350 pounds. Face down on a food town with a thousand pounds of cops on top of her. The citizen investigation by Berkeley Cop Watch clearly points out that the original dispatch for Kayla Moore was noted as a mental health incident. However, no professional mental health intervention was dispatched or activated. Something will come out of this, whether it's policy change, maybe those officers will finally get reprimanded. Something needs to happen. Those of us who are trying to move things forward, the challenge for us is how we synthesize the information and bring it together and use it strategically to make police misconduct cost the institution. So if that means it's that we gather all this information together about how they're treating mentally ill people and we start a, a class action lawsuit, boom. If The trick is to get organized. The trick is to take that little 13, 14 year old who's got his, their, her little phone and she saw what happened and to empower her by bringing her into some large movement and using her footage along with that of other people to say, yep, officer number 275, you know, and to put that officer on full blast and also to do people's investigations. In addition to conducting Know Your Rights trainings and doing outreach and patrols in and around Berkeley, Berkeley Cop Watch continues to demand justice for the needless killings of Kayla Xavier Moore by Berkeley police employees Brown, Cardoza, Gardner, Castmiller, Mathis, Phillips, Smith, and Two. And in 2013, the Society of Professional Journalists Northern California awarded Berkeley Cop Watch the James Madison Award for spearheading a campaign that denied the police outfits at UC Berkeley and the cities of Berkeley and Albany from acquiring a DHS-funded Lenco Bearcat. I'm also really inspired by the numbers of people who are willing to confront police, who are willing to be out there in difficult situations. Cop watching is happening, and cop watching by any other name, so I don't care what you call it.